Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Todd Letts, and I'm CEO of the Brampton Board of Trade. And uh, welcome, welcome to another engaging interview with experts, experts that can help you with key business issues that you are facing uh, as uh, our community grows and uh, continues to uh, uh, thrive through this uh, pandemic. I, I know many of you are familiar with the, uh, the amazing infrastructure projects that are occurring uh, in Brampton. We welcome about 14,000 new people to Brampton each year. And that means we are widening roads. We are, uh, uh, we've got construction for the Huron Ontario LRT coming into Brampton. And that means uh, a lot of uh, perhaps uh, disruption uh, in terms of business disruption and beating customers getting to your place of business. It might uh, require some uh, expropriation as well. And today's guest is a good friend, Peter Van Meerbergen. He's the VP of Client uh, Services for Bridgepoint Financial. And uh, Bridgepoint Financial has some very interesting financing options that can really help businesses that are impacted by Dis business disruption uh, due to a, a number of different circumstances. We'll get into that. Uh, but uh, let me uh, start by telling you a little bit more about Bridgepoint Financial. Bridgepoint Financial has been Canada's leading litigation lender for over 15 years by offering the most innovative and value-added funding solutions with an unwavering focus on client service and access to justice. We have provided over a quarter of a billion, I should say, uh, Bridgeport Financial has provided over a quarter of a billion in financial support to thousands of people. And thanks to an unparalleled record, has earned the trust of over 1,500 leading law firms. So today we're also joined uh, by uh, Jeff Goldstein, an advisor on expropriation and uh, valuation. Um, Bridgepoint Financial uh, is uh, really a, a cross-discipline um, uh, firm, a, a financing firm that provides expen exceptional experience uh, all across expropriation, law firm funding, settlement mm -hmm. lending, inheritance and estates, commercial and class action. So let me tell you a little bit more about Peter. Uh, Peter, uh, as VP Client Relations, has uh, over 25 years experience uh, in the financial services industry, including the last four with Bridgepoint. He's done an in-depth experience uh, uh, on a number of these uh, uh, cases, experience working for major financial institutions as well across Canada, across a multitude of disciplines, including personal and business finance, wealth, management and insurance. Uh, Jeff is a lawyer in Toronto. He specializes in expropriation uh, law. He's uh, appeared at the Ontario Superior Court of Justice, Environment and Land Tribunal of Ontario, and the local planning appeal tribunal. He has the experience to provide uh, direct and practical advice to clients. Jeff has a handle on the complex and technical aspects of expropriation and, uh, and represents business and property owners across Ontario. Now, for those of that don't know what expropriation uh, is, uh, Peter, why don't you just start us off uh, with, uh, with that? Certainly, Todd, but thank you very much. First of all, thank you for having uh, Jeff and I here with you today. We're thrilled to join you and be part of this series. And, uh, and uh, congratulations to you and your team on the fabulous job you've been doing and, and the, keeping the communication going and keeping our members informed during this time. It's quite impressive. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, Tr Todd, you're right. Uh, you made the comment about the uh, infrastructure projects that are happening in Brampton. Uh, there are many projects happening across the country for sure. In fact, uh, the federal government, uh, the Canadian government, is spending over $200 billion, that's a billion with a B, uh, in infrastructure projects over the next 10 years approximately. Uh, and Brampton is clearly one of the largest recipients of, one, a very large recipient of many of these initiatives. Great news for sure, uh, but it does come at a cost to those located uh, within the vicinity where these projects are occurring. And uh, one of the major impacts is expropriation, as you mentioned. And quite simply, expropriation occurs when private land is taken away for the public benefit. Uh, that's the simplest way to, to describe it. It's certainly one of the most extreme forms of government authority in Canada, uh, the right of eminent domain. Uh, but fortunately, laws are in place to help protect citizens on the downside uh, with respect to uh, expropriation. But your, your property may be expropriated to make way for the project. Just as importantly, your business may be left with a dramatic decrease in revenue. So it, it can be both ways, the impact of the property, but also the impact that the project's having on your business revenues uh, over the course of the, of the, the project. Uh, Bridgepoint has the financial solutions to get 
the access to justice, as you mentioned before, that that's rightfully deserved. You know, under the Expropriation Act in Canada, expropriated landowners are entitled to fair compensation. Uh, if they're served a notice of expropriation, and expropriation, by the way, could be partial or whole. It could be your entire property taken away, or it could be something as, as small as a bike lane going in and, and a portion of your property is, is, um, is expropriated. Uh, in, and in either case, it's, a, it's the same process. Uh, the impacted landowners should focus on receiving the fair compensation they deserve. Uh, expropriation of property is not only disruptive to you and your business, but Todd, it creates significant financial pressure in the short term and has major financial implications uh, on your business as well. Claims, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no. So um, uh, it's it's good to know of a resource like Bridgepoint uh, Financial for those businesses that, you know, for example, we've got uh, uh, the Here Ontario LRT uh, coming into Brampton uh, along Here Ontario uh, Street. There are uh, literally hundreds of businesses retail. Uh, office, uh, and um, there may be difficulty in uh, getting access uh, to um, uh, the business. Uh, significant portions of property, as you say, uh, may be taken away. And um, although there are laws in place to ensure uh, that there be fair compensation, there's not, it is not uncommon for that level or that number of fairness, that dollar figure of fairness to be in dispute. So if I feel aggrieved, if I'm a business owner and uh, I, I either have some business disruption uh, or uh, uh, it's taking a while for them to, to, to pay what uh, I feel just or I don't agree uh, with the amount uh, uh, that uh, they're offering, I give you a call, then what happens? Yeah, great question, Todd. And, and this is where we, we definitely come in. We are experts in financing. Uh, many types of litigation. Uh, you know, our unique solution is to provide you and your business uh, with financial assistance that can be used to pay for things such as your working capital, your relocation costs, if that happens, unfortunately, uh, legal costs uh, to help you obtain your fair, fair compensation. Certainly, uh, there's a lot of con there are costs, legal costs, experts that need to get involved to help find the proper valuation of your business, and we'll provide all of that financial support. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll advance funds for you. Uh, you know, once we, we meet, we'll talk, we'll structure a solution tailored to you. Uh, and we'll advance funds to you up front so you can continue to operate your business, work with your lawyer to fight for your just claim you deserve and pay your legal costs. Uh, repayment is made, well, this is an important point, repayment is made uh, when you receive your settlement. Uh, so there are no monthly repayment obligations during the process. So this, is a, this can be a substantial benefit to many businesses from a capital uh, perspective. And in many circumstances, the legal and financial costs that are incurred, Todd, uh, can, be claimed back, can be claimed back as part of uh, your compensation. Um, it's also important to note that we work with the best experts, such as Jeff in, in the industry. Uh, you do not have to suffer financially, and we can work together to help provide the best financial outcome. Um, yeah, and just, any, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I just want to replay what I, what I heard you say. So um, if I feel aggrieved, if I feel that there's, uh, uh, I'm not being treated uh, fairly, I reach out to you and there's really no cost for me uh, to do that. Is, is that what I heard you say? Well, that you, your, your fees may uh, uh, be recouped at the end at, uh, at settlement? Yeah, and every situation will be a little different, Todd, and these are ones we'd have to talk about, And but in, under the Expropriation Act, and I'll Jeff speak a little more to that, there is uh, there are clauses that, that uh, you know, sections that refer to the fact that your, your costs to the claim, legal and financial costs, uh, can be claimed back uh, to the, uh, as part of your settlement. So Very ultimately, good. right, it's little or no cost at the end of the day when the... Uh, when the settlement. Yeah, so, so you really do take a lot of uh, headache away, a lot of risk away, and provide an avenue uh, to get your point of view um, uh, shared uh, at the at the appropriate uh, uh, tribunal, and which can take a lot of time. And uh, uh, again, as a financial institution, you can find you can provide uh, bridge uh, financing for that as well. Well, this is very very interesting. Let me ask another question: Are claims? Uh, restricted to uh, just the property owner, or can others uh, that are impacted by construction, maybe a tenant, for example, uh, can others uh, impacted by construction projects, can they make claims as well? Jeff, you want to help us with that? 
Sure, I'll take this one, Todd, and thank you for uh, inviting me to participate in this uh, webinar. Happy to contribute. So yes, you're correct, Todd. There are various protections for both property owners and business owners under the Expropriations Act. So of course, if you are a property owner, commercial or residential, you are protected. You are entitled to the fair market value for uh, the property that is being acquired by the government. And we can speak further about what fair market value is. And just going back to your point about, will the government always offer uh, fair compensation at the outset? Well, just like any asset, there's different differing views on valuation. And that's why it's important to have professional, ad professional advisors determine what we view to be the value of your asset. And if, if there's a large delta between what the government uses to the process and methods they use to value your asset and how we believe your asset should be valued, that's where your experts can come out in and really extract value for you. So yes, the property owners are entitled to compensation when their properties are directly taken. Uh, business owners as well. If you are a business owner that operates in a property, property that is fully expropriated, meaning the entire property is purchased by the government requiring your business to close, you are entitled to various forms of, of compensation. And I think we're going to touch on that a little bit later. So well, property was, owners and tenants, yes. Yes, yes. So that was really my next question. So please continue, uh, Jeff. Uh, when What types of compensation, uh, what types of claims are available to both uh, the business, the tenant, or the property owner uh, that have been adversely impacted? Sure. So to give a general overview, one, we're talking about the fair market value of your land and how that's typically valued is on a highest and best use basis. So just to give you an example, I had a recent client that uh, was a business um, located, uh, had a restaurant in a low rise building. Uh, the property was fully expropriated. Now, the value of the property with the restaurant in place is much lower than the value of the property if it was going to be developed for condo purposes. In that case, it was reasonably probable that a development application was going to go ahead and be approved. And there, that created a huge delta between what the authorities thought the property was worth, valuing it based on a low-rise restaurant versus a condo tower. Okay, so that's one fair market value for your land. Number two, where what Peter alluded to, only a portion of your property is taken, the remainder of your property may suffer a diminution or decline in value. Now, the traditional example for this is, let's say you're a residential property owner and the government has to come in and install a hydro tower on your land, okay? So now they take a portion of your land to install that tower. That's a direct expropriation of a portion of your land. And as a homeowner, you probably wouldn't like if a tower is installed right out front of your front door. It typically causes a decline in the value of your property. So that's called an injurious affection claim under the Expropriations Act. A couple other forms of, did you want to jump in, Todd? Please, please continue. A, a yeah. couple other forms of damages um, related to businesses where a business is required to close as a result of a, an expropriation. All costs associated with relocating that business, like moving expenses, realtor commissions, losses on sales of inventory, uh, any other damage that is a natural consequence of the expropriation is compensable by the authorities to the uh, business owner. And the last piece that I'll mention um, that we touched on before is given that expropriation is an extreme uh, exercise of governmental authority, the Expropriations Act requires that all aggrieved property and business owners are fully compensated or made whole. What that means is, you as property owner do not have to pay for any of your professional advisors, whether it's legal fees uh, for a land appraiser, evaluator, potentially financing costs, all of these things are typically reimbursed by the government. Now I should mention there are exceptions and you have to evaluate it on a case by case basis, but typically the act requires that all reasonable fees are reimbursed by the authorities. Jeff, that is, uh, thank you. That uh, covers a lot of landscape and uh, uh, claims, opportunity for com compensatory claims that uh, a business may not 
a, ba a business may feel but may not be aware uh, that uh, there can be uh, access to justice for that. So I'm just going to review a couple of them again. There may be a difference or a delta, as you say, in the value of uh, land. That's pretty straightforward. Or if uh, there is expropriation of part of the land, and there may be a diminution of the remainder, uh, the value of, uh, of the land. Uh, an injurious, what did you call it? An injurious... It's called injurious affection, Todd, and if I may just add one more item, there's a relatively new area of law under the Expropriations Act that's developed on, uh, in the past seven or eight years called injurious affection where no land is taken. This is just a legalese way to say where a construction project that's instituted by the government impacts your business in a substantial and unreasonable manner, you may be entitled to compensation. So you don't have to be operating in a property where there's a direct expropriation. If you are substantially interfered with by construction, that could be deemed an expropriation as well. Um, it's a bit of a higher threshold to establish, but there are a number of businesses that will be operating on here, Ontario, that are, you know, in front of the construction with loss of parking, just loss of access, loss of visibility. These are all types of claims that are potentially compensable as well. Wow, that is uh, very, very helpful to know that landscape uh, and uh, both injurious affection with land or without land. And as you mentioned, even loss of sales and inventory uh, are, uh, are compensable. So that is an interesting outline of the uh, possibilities for a, a company. And this is so important now. Uh, particularly coming through uh, COVID, that even, you know, we've seen uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of months uh, of uh, 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 issues with the um, uh, with the disruption in business can uh, really impact the, the long-term uh, livelihood of businesses as well. So um, I guess the next question I have is back to Peter, and it's about timing. Um, a lot of these um, disputes with respect to appropriation and land acquisition um, take time, take time to provide value, take time to, for settlements, et cetera. What is it that a business can do that knows an LRT is coming across their front? Uh, uh, what can they do in advance to prepare uh, for uh, the potential, uh, uh, the potential uh, uh, impacts of, of construction to their business? Right, yeah, Todd, excellent question. Uh, and I have, I have seen this firsthand, you know, what a difference it would make if only you were prepared uh, ahead of time. And, and you, here Ontario LRT, timing is beautiful now for those that are impacted or maybe impacted, maybe I'm not even sure yet, but uh, you know, in, in, we have a lot of experience with other infrastructure projects as well as some, some, some of the smaller ones. But I think one that I'll use as an example, because it's probably a good uh, comparison if we're just talking about the here Ontario LRT as an example, is the Eglinton Crosstown in Midtown Toronto. Uh, it, a very, very big project, LRT project that's cutting right through uh, Midtown Toronto all along Eglinton. And uh, we've been working with many business owners along Eglinton and I've seen firsthand uh, how businesses have been significantly impacted by the massive construction. Obviously that project's you know, fairly long in the, in the tooth right now, but it's, um, you know, you see the impact that these businesses have had and struggling. Uh, you know, many businesses are hurting very badly from this project, a major reduction in business revenue. And, and it's not insignificant, it's major uh, business losses that they've had. They've lost customers, they've lost, they've lost loyal customers who uh, just, they can't get near those, they can't get near the restaurant, they can't get near the store, they, they, uh, uh, they've made other changes in their patterns and, and that business is gone. And in several circumstances, unfortunately, uh, heartbreaking to see, but businesses have closed and uh, obviously it's an outcome no one wants to have happen. Um, and, and, you know, also I'll just mention that, you know, offers that are made by the authorities um, can be significantly below market value and do not include the many other costs, you know, that are, that including the disruption to the business. And, and these are things you have to think about. Um, so many businesses would be in much better situation today if they followed just a few key steps uh, when they, when the project, before the project begins or during, you know, early on in the project, you know, make sure you're keeping excellent financial records. If you haven't been, you know, if you've been a shoebox accounting uh, in your in your store, and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But but be diligent. You know, keep really good record keeping and start it today. Get into that best. You should anyway. But uh, it's uh, get into that best practice because those records are going to be critically important down the road 
to show the losses that you've actually you've actually had as a result of the project. Um, if you experience a drop in revenue attributed to the construction, um, it needs to be verified. So keep all your receipts, track every expense your business incurs as a result of relocation, moving costs, costs you've, you know, that, that you had to reset up uh, at a different location or changes you had to make to your office or your store to as a result of the, uh, the project. Um, if you're approached by authorities with any form of notification, you should seek, can't underscore this enough, and I'm sure we'll say it many times before we finish, you should seek legal consultation before you do anything else. Um, if you already have been, and maybe you've even already signed some documentation, uh, and that could very well be, even with some of the, the owners of, of properties along here in Ontario today, uh, we should still talk uh, right away. You may still be entitled to additional compensation, uh, and we can continue that conversation. So finally, uh, I would say if you're experiencing business losses, Todd, uh, you need to put the authority on notice right away. And, and what I mean by that is you need to tell them that you're incurring losses and you want them to do something about it. Uh, it doesn't mean they will, uh, but you need to have that on record. So your claim is eligible for losses. Normally, it would be eligible for losses starting back from a year prior to the notice. So if you wait two years from now to put them on notice or, or you know, sometime in the future, you could be hurting yourself in terms of eligible compensation down the road. Um, keep a record of letters, emails, calls you made, who you spoke with, you know, just some of those best practices around keeping your records clean, keep, keeping an inventory. I've had, I've had actually, in some cases, I, I've had, I've had um, store owners who've had the store for 50 years and they never thought they needed to ever worry about things like that. And in other cases, people who have diligently had a binder and here it is, it's fully, you know, ready to go. And uh, just, you know, we'll look at all situations, but the more you're organized that way, it can help help significantly in the future. Peter, uh, those are very good uh, tips. And just to our uh, viewers, uh, um, we're covering a lot of detail uh, here. Uh, check the uh, the chat room as well. I've been trying to capture the key points that uh, Jeff has uh, made in terms of the landscape of uh, compensatory claims and uh, your very practical uh, tips for business people to prepare. Uh, uh, and, uh, and as you say, keep your receipts, track your expenses, if approached by a government authority, seek legal advice, uh, put the authority on notice right away and uh, keep all correspondence, maybe even uh, start a, a bind of it. That is uh, very, very uh, helpful advice. Uh, again, a note to our viewers, if you are interested in uh, viewing this session again, uh, it is available at bramptonbot.com slash expert uh, series. We have over 30 uh, ser interviews there, everything from scenario planning, cash flow uh, conservation, and uh, this very important topic as well. We're talking about um, recourse for expropriation and uh, other uh, business disruption due to uh, expropriation or due to construction projects as well, road widenings, LRTs, uh, etc. Gentlemen, uh, I want to just uh, go back uh, and uh, uh, Jeff, maybe we'll go to you on this, and Peter may uh, may have some insight as well. I know uh, you both uh, work well uh, together and uh, leverage your expertise uh, to help uh, the client put them at ease, reduce their anxiety, and uh, keep their uh, business uh, alive and, uh, and well. Why should a business or property owner speak to a lawyer, and when should they do that? Sure, I'll, I'll just take this. Uh, I think Peter did touch on it. It's very key to one, preserve the limitation period where there is one. So for those claims, if you are a business that is being impacted by construction, but there is no direct expropriation, it would be essentially considered a, nu a nuisance type of claim. You can go back one year from the date you've provided the authorities with your notice that you have suffered losses as a result of the construction. So if you've been operating, there's been construction, for instance, on Eglinton for the past five years, you've been negatively impacted by it, but you have not notified the authorities. Unfortunately, you can only potentially obtain compensation going back one year. So that type of limitation period is very important to keep in mind. And consulting with proper and specialized uh, expropriation counsel will ensure that that particular notice is served on the authorities. 
Uh, so it's very important to do that. Also, when you consult with uh, you know an expropriation lawyer, they typically have a suite of advisors that are well versed in expropriation related ma matters. So when a commercial or residential property is being taken, the authorities must provide the property owner with an appraisal report within a certain time frame under the Expropriations Act. As the property owner, you may wish to consult with a specialized appraiser that is involved in the expropriation matters to review that appraisal report and determine whether they think it's reasonably fair and sound or whether a competing report should be produced to better reflect a higher value for your property. So having a team of advisors that have done this dozens of times in the past is only going to be a benefit to you as the property and business owner. And it frees up your time to continue to sort of operate your business and swim up that tide that's been created by this construction interference while your professional advisors can step in and do the work of obtaining that compensation that you deserve. Right. Very good. Very good. Very good advice. Uh... Peter, any other thoughts on uh, uh, when to connect uh, with uh, with Bridgepoint yeah. or uh, or a lawyer? Absolutely, uh, Todd. Thank you. Uh, first of all, contact us. I mean, it, let's talk. Okay, let's discuss your unique situation, and we'll ensure that you have that financial support that you need to receive that compensation. And again, you know, the the and I think about uh, some of the some of the uh, business owners that I've that I've spoken with. You know, in some cases, they've had to let staff go because they're, 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 or they're thinking about letting staff go. And we've been, you know, they're talking to us to say, you know, how can we help and, and provide them some a lifeline so they don't have to do that. Uh, so they can keep their business moving forward and, and during, during the tough time. So the sooner we do that, the better. And we, can, and we can get you the financial support to receive that compensation. The difference between what you're offered and fair value, as Jeff said, can be substantial. Um, our Bridgepoint financial support will help you obtain that compensation you deserve. We can help you guide to the right lawyer. Uh, we can help you get to the right experts for your unique circumstance. You know, I just want to underscore, you know, we've led, the, as you mentioned at the beginning, Todd, we've led the litigation financing market for over 15 years. I'm backed by the most awesome team of financial and industry, industry experts. Uh, we'll definitely get you that financial help you need and guide you each step of the way. Uh, we are absolutely obsessed with making sure we make it a great experience for our, for our clients. Uh, our website is attached to the meeting, so uh, please uh, go there for any additional information. Uh, our contact information is there, so please reach out anytime, day or night. We'd be happy to chat with you. Uh, and uh, I would say, yeah, you talk to a lawyer, talk to us. Let's get the conversation going sooner rather than later. Well, that's fantastic, uh, Peter, and uh, we're just so happy that uh, we have you as members yes. of the uh, the Brampton Board of Trade. Jeff, thank you for that. Peter, thank you for that. And uh, yes, uh, BridgepointFinancial.ca. Start the conversation uh, with uh, with Peter if you feel as though if you know that construction is coming uh, uh, to your uh, commercial neighborhood. If you feel aggrieved by the expropriation or the disruption in uh, business, uh, uh, both of these gentlemen are quite accessible, quite insightful, and uh, have today provided us with a very practical outline of the compensatory landscape, as well as tips uh, for you to uh, prepare. Again, if you're uh, interested in uh, viewing this again, uh, in our chat, we have uh, uh, bramptonbot.com slash expert series, where you can view not only this, but uh, over 30 very practical, helpful tips to our members, interviews with experts that can help you in everything from HR issues, layoffs, rehiring, understanding government programs, cash flow, uh, uh, pr preservation, scenario uh, planning, uh, uh, tax uh, planning, uh, IT planning, and uh, also today as well. A really, uh, we will be pointing a lot of businesses to uh, this uh, interview, gentlemen. I really appreciate uh, your time uh, here uh, today. I'm going to ask you to uh, have, if you have any final comments, please let me let me know. But I'm just going to share with you and our viewers some upcoming meetings that may be of particular uh, interest uh, to our, uh, our business viewers. Uh, October 14th is uh, next week, uh, right after Thanksgiving, uh, the uh, Tuesday, uh, Brampton Business Women Meet at the Brampton Board of Trade at a network called ConnectWork. And um, Thea from Sage uh, uh, HR will be talking about emotional intelligence. You know, somebody mentioned to me yesterday, we're not just in a respiratory health 
crisis right now. We're in a mental health one as well. And having empathy as employers for customers, for suppliers, for, uh, for workers is important. And that'll be the topic on October 14th. Also next week, the Wednesday, October 15th, those of you that are in marketing and sales, those of you that are in business development, you're not going to want to miss our business development network. Uh, you can find it at BranthamBOT.com slash P2P. That's peer to peer for our business development uh, network. We uh, will be having short presentations from uh, folks in the uh, uh, long-term care uh, uh, facility from Bayshore, uh, uh, personal care, as well as from the transportation, uh, Aaron from uh, Vision, will be talking about their sales strategies. And the whole hour is about sales strategy, helping you build your book of business. That's October 15th at 8 a.m. On Thursday the 16th, we have our Civic Leadership uh, Network. Uh, those of you that are interested in uh, polishing the brand of Brampton externally, helping investment to be attracted and uh, ensuring that our elected leaders make the decisions that are aligned with business growth and employment. That is uh, 8 a.m. on October 16th. You can find out more about upcoming uh, networks at brantbot.com slash P2P. Also this month, it is Small Business Month and particularly Small Business Week on the 20th of October. That evening, 6 p.m. is the Night of Inspiration. That is our Business Excellence Awards where we will be honoring uh, we'll be honoring William Johnson of Bramgate Automotive as our Business Person of the Year and also honoring over 53 companies that have been nominated for their excellence, excellence in 13 different uh, categories. You're not going to want to miss this. We've got a great deal with our local restaurants. You can stay at home, enjoy the gala, you wear a tux up from top to, uh, from, from midway up and pajamas on the bottom. We don't care. Uh, we just want you to have fun, be inspired, and celebrate the excellence and the super duper amazing stories of business success here in Brampton. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, as always, we're here to help you. BramptonBOT.com slash reopening resources uh, for uh, sourcing PPE, for understanding government programs, expert series for great advice like uh, we've received today from Peter and Jeff. And uh, at, the, at that, Peter, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to say to close us out here today? Well, thank you, Todd. Uh, first of all, thanks again for having us with you today. Uh, it was a pleasure to join you. Uh, we absolutely want to reach out and help uh, your, your members, uh, business owners across Brampton and just to reinforce, we talked a little bit here on Ontario LRT. Again, it could be a multitude of reasons uh, that uh, that we should be talking. Other projects that are on the go, something that's happened in the past that you want to you want to bring forward and talk about today. Happy to have that conversation, and uh, look forward to uh, helping your members uh, uh, going forward. Thank you so much. We're so happy to have you both as members. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.